everyone and welcome to another online family worship service from the Rivers team. Today's service is a special one for remembrance as we remember all the men and women who have died fighting for freedom over the years as well as the local people who have died over the past year. While we're waiting for the countdown to reach zero and the service to start I'm going to interview another member of the Rivers team family. Today's guest is Sarah Clayton. Good morning, Sarah. Morning, Joe. Sarah is the Withers Team Children's and Families Worker. Regular viewers will recognise her as she has contributed many craft slots to our online services over the past seven months. Sarah, I've got a lot of important questions to ask you, but let's start with the most important. What is your favourite food? Oh, let me think. Puddings and chocolate. Mmm, me too. How long have you been the Withers Team Children's and Families worker and what does your job involve? I have worked for the Rivers Team for two years now. My work involves promoting Christian values to families and children within the parish. What do you think is the best age for a kid to be? Oh, a toddler, when everything is new and exciting. That's a good answer, but not the correct one. The answer I was looking for was eight, because that's how old I am. Let's try another. What is your favourite TV programme? Oh, there's so many to choose from. Uh, 
Downton Abbey. Not one that I personally find riveting, I must admit, but I think my mum and dad quite enjoy it. I know that you're part of something called the Centenary Project. Can you tell me what it is? The Centenary Project seeks to equip the local churches to effectively engage, grow and disciple a new generation of young people, children and families. That sounds great. Now let's talk a little bit more about you. Do you have a hobby? Uh, I have a few hobbies. I like going to the gym, I enjoy walking and I do read. I like reading too. Although perhaps our taste in books is a little different. My favourite is Diary of a Wimpy Kid. I know that before COVID-19 you set up something called First Steps. Can you tell me what that is? Yes, First Steps is a group for parents and carers with under school age children to come and play and learn about God within a safe area. That sounds great. And finally, what are you going to be doing to keep busy during this new COVID-19 lockdown? Ah, good question. I have got lots of craft bags to be making between now and Christmas. Great stuff. On behalf of myself and all the kids in the team, thanks for keeping us busy with your fantastic craft bags. Thanks also for letting me interview you this morning, Sarah. Everyone watching, who else would you like me to interview? Let me know in the comments and your wish will be my command within reason. See you next week and now, World Titles! So welcome to our online Remembrance Sunday service. As we worship together, we remember all those who sacrificed their lives for the cause of freedom and justice. Following the example of Jesus who laid down his life for us all. On the night before he died, Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. We meet in the presence of God. We commit ourselves to work in penitence and faith for reconciliation between the nations, that all people may together live in freedom, justice and peace. We pray for all who in bereavement, dis disability and pain continue to suffer the consequences of fighting and terror. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future for you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. You unravel me with a melody Surround me with the sun of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are come. I'm no longer a slave.
from my mother's womb you have chosen me and love has called my name I've been born again into a family your blood throws through my veins I'm no longer You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies to all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave. Split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me so I could stand and sing. I am a child of God. You split the sea so I could. Fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child. everyone. Because it's Remembrance Sunday today, our craft activity is to make poppies. Um, there are loads of ways you can make poppies. I looked on the internet. Endless. Here are a few. This one is the bottom of a fizzy pot bottle, which I've painted red. A um, bit difficult to paint it, but persevere. It might need a couple of coats and then just a little black dot. In the middle um, but you could also cover that with tissue paper if you wanted equally anything that makes it red if you're feeling adventurous or you have somebody in your family who knits or crochets you could do one like this um, again simple poppy shape and it has a button for the black bit in the middle I made this one out of tissue paper and I'm going to show you how to do a similar one in red paper. If you haven't got anything red at home, you can always use white paper and then colour it in. So the basic poppy is a round shape like that, crinkly around the edges and has a small V cut out of it. Um, and if you put the two ends of the V together and stick it down, it just makes a slightly rounder shape for your poppy. Like that. 
And then there's a middle bit to this poppy, which is a set of three petals, a bit like that. Doesn't have to be exact. If you can't find a template, just do what you think and I'm sure it will work. And then you stick that piece inside the circle that you've already got. So, a bit of glue in the middle. Squeeze it together. Okay, so we're building up the poppy. And then what it really needs is the little black bit in the middle. So a circle of black card or foam or paper if you need to uncolour it in. Um, or you could even use a button if you have one. And again, we'll just stick some glue in the middle of the poppy. And stick the black dot in there. Now, a poppy needs a stem. So I, for the stems of mine, I've used some green, green pipe cleaners or chenille sticks as they seem to be called these days and just stuck it on the back. Um, some garden cane would do if you have some green ones of those. Um, or just a piece of card that you can cut to fit. And there we go. That is my poppy. Um, it's been suggested that it would be a good idea to stick poppies in the window for Remembrance Day in the same way that we put rainbows in there for the NHS at the beginning of the first lockdown. So it would be really good to see some poppies in the window. Send us in a photo if you manage to do that and I'll show you mine. So this is my window display. I've put some grass at the bottom, a few different poppies on there and the words lest we forget. Just to remind us that we need to remember about the wars so they don't happen again. Yours doesn't need to be this complicated. A simple red poppy will do. People will know exactly what you mean. Walk with me. 
Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision, which worship God in the Spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh, though I might also have confidence in the flesh. If any other man thinketh that he hath whereof, he might trust in the flesh I more. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, as touching the law, a Pharisee. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do not count them, but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, which is of God by faith, that I may know him, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable until his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Jesus Christ. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule, let us mind the same thing. Our heritage is part of what makes us who we are and it's right to remember and give thanks for those people and events that have helped form us. So I wonder, what about your heritage do you treasure the most? I think I value the inquisitive and pioneering spirit that I learnt from my granddad. The value of family that's passed down through my parents and parents-in-law. The Christian heritage and understanding provided particularly by my mum and my grandma. In our passage today from his letter to the Philippians, Paul reflects on his Jewish heritage and sets out various credits that once would have given him confidence that he was part of God's righteous people. It's an impressive list, and one that had given Paul access to the elite level of the religious society of his day. But having set all this out, Paul then goes on to make an extraordinary statement. I consider them garbage, he says, compared to the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord and being found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Jesus Christ. Paul had come to realise that whatever personal heritage or achievements we might want to count as credit, they're never enough to make us right with God. Jesus is the only one who can do that. Above all else, Paul says, I want to know this Jesus. Yes, he says, and to know the power of his resurrection in my life. This is of greater value to Paul than all the things he once counted as profit. Knowing that he has been set right in the eyes of God through the death of Jesus 
and knowing his resurrection power for this life and beyond. This is a heritage with eternal significance. But for Paul, this is not just about knowing Jesus in some vague theoretical or historical way. He goes on to talk about participation in his sufferings and becoming like him in his death. For Paul and for us, this means dying to the self-centred life that comes so naturally to us all and instead embracing the difficulty, hardship and sometimes suffering that comes from living to serve God and put in the needs of others before ourselves. Today we remember events in our nation's past that have helped form our present and we honour those who did just that and paid the ultimate price by laying down their lives in the service of others in two world wars and in other conflicts. For the greater good and in pursuit of ideals like justice and freedom. And in this they follow the pattern of Jesus, who, as Paul has reminded us earlier in his letter, being in very nature God, made himself nothing. Taking the very nature of a servant, Jesus humbled himself by becoming obedient, even unto death in order that we might know the true freedom that comes from a life lived in Christ. For Paul, this is the key to true community. The koinonia we talked about at the very start of this series. It is embodied in the self-giving life of Jesus and what he accomplished through his death and resurrection. And Paul goes on to encourage the Philippians to live up to that which has already been attained and, forgetting what is behind, to strain forward to what is ahead. It's right and proper to remember the past, the heritage that others fought and died to secure, the acts of individual heroism, the community spirit and care for neighbours that existed. But we also need to recognise our responsibility to press forward together to build on their legacy. As we face a second national lockdown and all the difficulty, the uncertainty and for many the hardship that will go with that, it's good to remember those who have faced great challenges in the past and to follow their example of self-giving and sacrifice and to recognise our collective responsibility to live up to those ideals by the way we respond to each other and the wider needs of our communities. It's also right to remember with sorrow the things that lead to war and conflict and to recognise our own part in that, to realise that it is only in Jesus that we are set right before God and to respond in faith by committing our lives to him. Let's pray. Loving God, thank you that in your son, Jesus, you invite us into a new and living relationship with you and through that into right relationship with one another. Help us to grasp the unsurpassed worth of that and to allow it to take hold of our lives, that we might live fully and completely to your praise and glory. Amen. We remember with thanksgiving and sorrow those whose lives in world wars and conflicts past and present have been given and taken away. They shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. 
we will remember them. Ever-living God, we remember those whom you have gathered from the storms of war into the peace of your presence. May that same peace calm our fears, bring justice to all peoples and establish harmony among the nations through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. You hold my every moment. You calm my raging sea.
A Remembrance Poem In crimson fields and the dusky sky We remember times gone by Battles fought and battles won There was nothing more they could have done With letters back and forth They kept their spirits up Writing to their loved ones made them not give up Never talking of the mud between their toes And how they had to hold their nose Never letting on that their best friend now had gone I'm fine, they said I'll be home before too long Wondering how and why they were led over the top to die, but they did it all for the greater good, to serve a country that they loved. Years went on, and the Great War had ended, although with some sorrow families had mended, laughing and dancing, singing and smiling. It's hard to believe they soon would be sighing, for on the horizon the Second War came, with horror and violence and lives lost just the same. Families split up, children sent to the coast, sons of mothers went to their post. Conscripted and signed up, they left one by one. They had to go, there was a job to be done. With a heavy heart they marched in line, with we'll meet again being the thought in their mind. Spitfires and hurricanes twisted and turned, as they took down the enemy they crashed and they burned. As the night skies grew darker and thickened with smoke, they said, will we see morning with a lump in their throat? The blitz was upon them, the days were so dim, blackouts at windows so no light could get in. Now we have Covid, we're in a pandemic. No one could foresee it or knew how to prevent it. The doctors, nurses, key workers too, all pulled together to help us get through. We won't be defeated, we will not give in, we will do what we have to, to all meet again. Though many wars have come and gone, we're still fighting them today. With terrorists and Covid and diseases that won't go away, the sun will shine on us again and the clouds will go away. In the mantra of Sir Captain Tom, tomorrow will be a good day. We thank you, Lord, for all the war heroes that have served over the years. We remember today families that have lost loved ones to war. We greatly admire their courage and strength and the sacrifices that they make for us. 
We thank you for Captain Tom, a war hero who, despite having seen many horrors of war, remains a beacon of hope in these dark times. We ask that you may all learn from the past and go forward into a more peaceful world. Amen. We now remember the members of our families not affected by war, but by age, circumstances and disease. We mourn their loss just the same. We remember the families of those who have died during the past year since our last memorial service at St Mary's and pray that they will know your loving peace at this time. Many we won't know personally, but others we will, and some were part of the church family. Silently, we can remember our own loved ones no longer with us, or we could light a candle thanking God for their lives. And so we remember. Denise Clark, Ida Marion Thompson, Donald Ryan, Edna Ryan, Eileen Rollinson, Eric Jackson, Mary Whitehouse, Norman Lazenby, Beatrice Jones, Eliza Mary Martin, Jean Cook, William Percy Fuchs, Ronald Hudson, Peter Knight, Graham Epperson, Jennifer Ingrid Lee, Vera Castor, Frederick Milner, Janet Keeling, Irene Cooper, Keith James Quinn, Irene Marriott, Sadie Hunter, Kathleen Needham, Dennis Ford, Edith Thackeray, Alice Chapman, Suzanne Dorothy Loverseed, Frida Ditcher, Audrey Jarvis, Patricia Saboff, Danny Thompson, Elizabeth Ann Maycock, Evelyn McLaughlin, John Eyre, Jean Demain, Thelma Maguire and Willis Bullock. Father of all, remember your holy promise and look with love on all your people, living and departed. On this day we especially ask that you would hold forever all who have suffered during war, those who returned scarred by warfare, those who waited anxiously at home, and those who returned wounded and disillusioned, those who mourned, and those communities that were diminished and suffered loss. Remember too those who acted with kindly compassion, those who bravely risked their own lives for their comrades, and those who in the aftermath of war worked tirelessly for a more peaceful world. And as you remember them, remember us, O Lord. Grant us peace in our time, and longing for the day when people of every language, race and nation will be brought into the unity of Christ's kingdom. This we ask in the name of the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Remembering the story and celebrating the birth of Jesus in the Rivers team this Christmas with four special online services throughout December. Please put the dates in your diary and join us for a virtual Christingle service at 10.30am on Sunday the 13th, an online nativity service at 10.30am on Sunday the 20th, a candlelit carol service at 4pm on Christmas Eve the 24th and a Christmas Day celebration at 10am on the 25th. So once again a huge thanks to all who've been involved in our online service this morning and as we close our service let's commit ourselves to responsible living and faithful service. Will you strive for all that makes for peace? Will you seek to heal the wounds of war? Will you work for a just future for all humanity? Merciful God, we offer to you the fears in us that have not yet been cast out by love. May we accept the hope that you have placed in the hearts of all people and live lives of justice, courage and mercy through Jesus Christ, our risen Redeemer. Amen. God grant grace to the living, to the departed rest, to all nations unity, peace and concord and to us and all God's servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>